So good to see you guys. I love it. Can we put our hands together one more time for um, our online family, those that are joining us online? We love you. I want you guys to catch this. Um, every single Sunday and throughout the week, we literally have hundreds of people that are a part of our online family that are leaning in to experience what you get to experience in the room. And we believe that God's presence transcends computer screens and AirPods and offices and cubicles and drives to work and literally changes people's lives. And so we value you. We thank you for tuning in. And can we put our hands together just welcoming them one more time for streaming in? You're a part of the family. We pray that this new series encourages you and inspires you to live a life of faith. I also want to just make mention as I uh, begin here today, I have some special guests in the room today. I have my family. I have my, my mom. I have my dad. So we have Phil and Becky, Pastor Phil and Becky. My dad's been pastoring for over 35 years. Try over 40, he said. Over 40 years at Lakeside Assembly of God in Detroit, and not in Detroit, but in Shelby Township, Michigan. You guys have heard me reference uh, Michigan, and um, you know they have been referencing this whole weekend that the weather in Michigan is better than the weather out here right now. And, and I, I, I have my sister and my, my uh, brother-in-law also here from the greater Portland area. We have Pastor Ryan and Julie Hakes. And they just planted Overland Church in Portland, Oregon. And God is doing amazing things, reaching the lost, reaching the lost. And man, I have heard story after story already of how God is changing people's lives, marriages that are being restored, addictions that are being broken because of your step of faith. And so I'm so honored to have my family here. And it's good to be back in the pulpit. I've missed you guys. I don't know if you've missed me, but I've missed you. And uh, I'm, I'm itching for that microphone in my hand those, those past two weeks. But it's been, it's been really good to be able to be back with the family. And we obviously welcomed baby Beckett into our lives. And uh, we, yeah, thank you. God's a little miracle, man. And what really inspired this series is when we had our child dedication, Last week on Mother's Day, I was able to hold our, our foster baby, baby Bo. And, um, you know, we were instructed to give three words to declare over our, our children last week. And the first word that came to mind for me, for Bo, was the word overcomer. Um, Bo was, was born with meth and fentanyl in his system when, when he was brought into the world. And... I can't help but think about his experience in the womb, his experience coming into the world, but, but the, the challenges that he faced in the womb are really so different than what the experience we're having with him right now. It's crazy to see what his life has already become in just a few short months. Like, he was born with the heaviest of heavy drugs in his system, and he has been an overcomer. He did not have to go on morphine in the NICU. All he had to do was, was, was get some, some food in him, get some milk in him, and he hasn't stopped drinking since. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's dense. And I'm like, he's an overcomer. And, and, He's met all of his milestones. He's checked out perfectly. He, little baby Bo, I kid you not, our foster baby sets the atmosphere of joy in our home. He's a little joy bomb, man. He is just full of laughs and smiles. His first belly laugh was yesterday. That's pretty fun when your child does that. Goes from the giggle to like the belly laugh. And it's amazing to see how the Lord is already giving him this victorious story, overcoming what the enemy purpose for evil, God has purpose for victory. And I think about his life, and it made me um, just really excited to start this brand new series called Overcomers. Because the reality is, is that we all have things in life to overcome. 
Maybe there are things in our life that are holding us back that have to do with mindsets that have been wired into the fabric and framework of our brain. Maybe it's been defaults and patterns and things that have been spoken over us or things that we've believed about ourselves since we were young. Maybe it's things that have happened to us. It's pain, it's, it's trauma, it's, it's suffering. And we need God to help us overcome the loss and the pain of the events and experiences that have happened in our lives. Maybe for some of us, it's the opposition that we're facing. Maybe it's the financial situation that we're in. Maybe it's a relational point of turmoil or, or, or breakup or, or this, this hopelessness and singleness that you're like, man, I need God to help me overcome this. Maybe for some of us, it's barriers that keep on blocking the way. Doors that feel like they continually remain shut. Walls that have yet to fall. See, the thing about spirituality if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're all in with Christ, the enemy knows that he cannot beat you. So he tries to beat you down. See, if the enemy knows that he can't keep you from heaven, he's going to try to make you live in hell here on earth. He's going to try to trap you in a prison of doubt, worry, anxiety, defeat, discouragement, so that you don't experience the freeness and the fullness of the life of an overcomer. The enemy's chief strategy for your life is to get you discouraged and defeated and your eyes off the ultimate overcomer. But I love what Paul says in Romans 8, verse 37. He says, it's not, and this series is not about spiritual warfare because honestly, I don't believe the enemy deserves that much attention. It's simply about embracing reality and stepping into our true identity because Paul says in Romans, no matter what you face, no matter what obstacle is in your way, no matter what you're going through, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. How can you be more than a conqueror? Victory isn't a moment, it's a mindset. See, conquering is like when you're in the NBA playoffs right now and you win a game. It's a moment. But an overcomer says, I can live as a victor, not a victim. I can live as a winner, not a loser. I can live with confidence and security and faith and hope in season and out of season. I can live it in times of success and I can live it in times of failure. I can live it when times are great, when the weather is awesome, and I can live it when it's May gray and June gloom. I, 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 I can live it when my relationships are healthy. I can live it when there's suffering and pain and loss. Through all these things, I am an overcomer. It's interesting because the devil is known as many things, but one thing that the devil is known as, as the accuser. He's always going to try to tell you what you can't do, what you won't do, what might happen if you tried to. See, the devil is not just the accuser, though. We have to realize that the devil is a defeated loser. There, there was an old heresy called dualism, where, where, where there was this idea that the devil and God were on the same level. And it's this ultimate warfare with the same level of power, forces warring against each other. And sometimes we believe that. Man, the devil's just attacking me. The devil's just attacking me. The devil's just attacking me again. I want you guys to step into the songs that you sung today, that you have a champion on your side. The victory is already won. You're not striving for victory. You're living from victory. The war is over. The devil is a liar. And you are an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm excited to preach this series. I've missed you guys. I love you guys. 
So what I want to do in this series is I, I, I love at times to do character studies. And we're going to actually go to the Old Testament and we're going to study some characters over the next few weeks that face the very same kinds of things that we face today. Because although times have changed, struggles and opposition and trials and temptations have been the, pretty much the same for thousands of years. And I want to lean in and explore how they were victorious, how they were overcomers, how they trusted God and leaned on him. And, and in doing so, I want to teach us how to live victoriously in every season and in every circumstance. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to go to the character of Joshua. We're going to jump into Joshua chapter 1. And I want to actually begin our study today uh, by reading the first nine verses of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Are you guys ready? Say, uh-huh. Uh -huh. See, I, I know maybe many of us have read this passage before, and sometimes as we read this passage, it reads as a monologue, but it's really a dialogue. And you're going to hit these moments where God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. And he actually repeats it three times. And you're kind of like, why does he repeat it three times? Well, because... He's actually having a dialogue with Joshua. It's just that Joshua's words aren't recorded in Joshua chapter 1. But it's the same as, as, as our, you know, kind of conversation with God. Maybe Joshua did have a conversation with God audibly, giving God some pushback when God was like, hey, I'm calling you to this. You need to be strong and courageous. And he's giving him verbal pushback. We do that sometimes. Um, but, but maybe it was an internal dialogue. You know, like we have that at times where God calls you to do something and then inside, maybe you don't say it out loud, but there's an internal pushback against him. Internal, I can't do this. Internal, ah, that's too big for me. Internal, man, I'm afraid. I want to invite you into this dialogue for a moment. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I'm imagining Joshua's internal dialogue at this moment. Whew. I'm the assistant. Moses is gone. You're telling me to lead one million people who've been complaining in a desert and we're supposed to go and conquer and possess a land that I've never experienced. It, it, it doesn't sound, God, like that's going to fit into my iCal schedule this week. And God, God goes, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the... From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. But, 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 but God, that's not my personality type. I'm the assistant, not the leader. I, I'm, a, I'm a type nine peacemaker on the Enneagram. I, I, I'm a good follower, but not a great leader. God says, be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to, to their ancestors I would give them. Well, God, I don't know enough. I don't have the Bible degree. I don't have the training. I'm not that kind of guy. And God says what? Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave you. Don't deviate from them, turning either to the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study my word. By the way, there's power in studying God's word. It's not about what the world says you are. It's not about what a blog says you are. It's not about what a podcast or a friend's opinion says you are. It's about who God says you are. Especially nowadays in the time and culture that we live in. Be strong and courageous. 
By doing what? Meditate on this book of instruction carefully, day and night, so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command for the third time. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That verse right there, Joshua 1.9, over the last few years, has been the most highlighted verse on the YouVersion Bible app. Think about that for a moment. Which tells me what? There are a lot of people like me and you that don't feel strong and courageous. A lot of people like me and you that struggle with fear, anxiety, insecurity, a lack of confidence, worry. The most repeated command in the Bible from cover to, go- from cover, to cover, from God to us is what? Do not fear. Do not be afraid. See, fear is the number one culprit that keeps you from becoming who God desires for you to be. It stunts your growth. It kills your confidence. It will push you away from other relationships that God brings alongside for you to connect with and partner with. Fear makes you insecure. And you can waste your life trying to compete with people that aren't even watching trying to impress people who aren't looking, trying to please people who you'll never please. Fear destroys the destiny that God has for you. That's why the title of this first message in our Overcomer series is Putting Fear in Its Place. Anybody out there want to put fear in its place for good today? See, the real, I, I'm not going to be some, some hype preacher that says that you're never going to fe- feel fear in life. You're human. You and I are going to feel fear, but you don't have to be a slave to fear one day further. You don't have to spend one more minute being in prison to fear, being chained to doubt and worry and anxiety in ways that the enemy tries to enslave you in. I love that my family is here today because last night we sat around the fire and we were exchanging memories and stories of past marking moments in our lives. And it's really interesting because I think I was just observing some of the most significant moments that we recounted last night had to do with moments where dad helped us overcome our fears. We talked about jumping off of cliffs like the rock quarry in Canada, where maybe that went beyond logic, but we overcome our fear. Like at eight years old, you know, jumping off a 40, 50 foot cliff. We, we talked about doing night snorkeling off Singer Island in West Palm Beach. Like who does that? It's amazing. Pitch black, just one flashlight. We held on to dad's hand right and left and dad's just shining the light and it's just pure blackness. It's just, but it was a mark, those were marking moments for us. We talked about being in like special presentations at the church where we overcame at an early age the fear of public speaking. Whether we wanted to or not, we were put up there on stage as a pastor's kid <laughs> and learned to overcome our, our fear. It's really interesting when you think about it, the power of learning to overcome your fear and how that shapes you into the person that you become. The reality is, is that you and I get older, the challenges, the obstacles, the, the trials, the anxieties, they, they get much more serious and daunting than jumping off cliffs and snorkeling. And this is why I love the Bible. The Bible doesn't filter people's stories. The Bible, um, like in this story with Joshua, it, it, it doesn't take a character like this and make him a spiritual robot. Where as soon as God calls him to something big that's beyond this pay grade, he just goes, I will do that. God's like, three times, I got to remind you, be strong and courageous. Why? Because Joshua was freaked out. He was full of insecurity, full of fear, full of the uncertainty, full of inadequacy. I love this. This is actually, by the way, a proof of why the Bible is true. Because if you were 
in ancient times trying to get people to buy in to obey and give full allegiance to this almighty, all-powerful God, you would just write narratives of people that as soon as that God said something, they just instantly were confident and obeyed. The, the, one of the reasons why, why the Bible is so beautiful and accurate and true is because it gives us a raw, real picture of people who are just like me and you that doubted that feared, that worried, that were anxious, that were hopeless, that were desperate, and how God worked through it. As we go back to the first part in Joshua's story, let's, let's look at his first fear. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. If you're taking notes this morning, the first fear that Joshua had to overcome is the fear of uncertainty. In other words, it's the fear of the unknown. The future is uncertain. Moses, the pillar of certainty, is dead. He's gone. Our leader is no longer. Who's going to take charge? What's going to happen? Where are we going to go? Who's going to lead these people? One million people. What is that going to take? And on top of it, God is calling Joshua to a place that he's never been before. Where? Across the Jordan River into a brand new land. This was a transitional time. And maybe for some of you guys, you find yourself there today where you go, John, I'm finding myself in a transitional time. Maybe you just graduated college and it's like, okay, where do I go and what do I do next? Maybe... For some of us, the cash flow was great and the economy was great, but you're in a transitional time. And that job that you had that seems so safe and secure is dried up or the deals aren't coming in. Maybe for some of you, you're in a transitional time where things are uncertain. You knew what it was like to raise your kids at, at, at this level, but now they're teenagers and they're psycho. I say it again. <laughs> but you still love them. You're like, God, what do I do? I've never, I've never been here before. Maybe for some of you, it's this, this fear of the future with the way that the world is going. And the policies and the, the laws and the politics and, and the news cycle. And, and, and it's, it's causing a fear cycle because you don't know what it's going to look like next month. You don't, you don't know where you're going to send your kids to school. You don't know who's going to be in office. You don't know what 2024 is going to look like. And it's causing all of this uncertainty and this anxiety and this fear of the unknown. You're in a transitional time. And you're asking yourself, what if... What if it doesn't work out? What if I take my family along this, this ride and it falls apart? What if I thought I heard from God, but it was just me? I wonder if Joshua ever wondered that. Like, maybe that was just like the pizza I ate last night. Like, was this whole, like, leading the nation thing really from God, going to a land I've never been before, crossing the Jordan River and having to defeat 31 kings. Was that, no, 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 hold on. Maybe, was that God's voice or my voice? Uncertainty. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the future. What's going to happen next? See, the enemy will always present problems, but God always provides promises. I want to remind you of this in the garden at the very beginning. Adam and Eve. The serpent comes and he presents a problem. Why can't you eat from this tree? Should you really trust God? Should you really have faith in him? I think God might be withholding something from you. 
What if there's a, you know, something around the corner that's better than this? Like, like and, and God gave them a promise. He said, just trust my promise. I'm going to provide for all of your needs. You can eat from every tree besides this one. Trust me, I got you. Man, be blessed, be fruitful, and multiply. Govern the earth. I'm going to give you all that you need. The enemy will always give you what ifs and present problems. And I just want to declare to you today, I want you to turn that around, and I want to invite you into a question. What if you actually trusted God into your future? Because the reality is, is most of our anxiety comes from the unknown in our future. What if Jesus was in your future? What if, what if Jesus was actually the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the author and the finisher? What if Jesus didn't just forgive you of your past? What if he was someone who was actually preparing a place for you in your future? What if Jesus is in your tomorrow? How would you live today if you knew Jesus was in your tomorrow? How would you live today if you knew that you could not fail? How would you live today if you weren't like striving for victory but living from a place of victory? See, you don't have to live with anxiety about the future because you got a God who's already victorious over it. See, the enemy presents problems. God always provides promises. Joshua 1, verse 3. I promise you, Joshua, what I promise who? Moses. It's the same promise. Yesterday, today, and forever. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land given to you. From the Negev wilderness, here, here's the extensiveness of the promise. From the wilderness to the mountains, to the river, to the sea, to all the land of the Hittites, I promise you that wherever you set your foot, you're already on land that I have given you. See, your greatest opportunity for growth is not in times of certainty, but in times of uncertainty. Because you don't really need to trust God unless you totally need to trust God. There, there, there is no growth in the comfort zone and there is no comfort in the growth zone. So many of us go, God, grow me. I want to grow me. Or, I, I want you. <laughs> oh, I do. I want to grow me. And just, my hair is falling out. But, <laughs> ch -ch 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 -chia, but, <laughs> God, I want you to grow me. And God's like, all right, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Here you go. And you're like, no, 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 wait. I, that's not how I want you to grow me. And God's like, no, that's the only way I can grow you. The only way I can grow your faith is when you don't know where to go and what to do. Fear is afraid to take a step because of what might happen, but faith is rooted in a promise. God says, wherever you step, there I am. And I love that God references Moses to Joshua in this moment. He's like, remember Moses, the guy who didn't know me, and then he met me for the first time at a burning bush, and he asked me to introduce myself to him, and I said, here's my name. I am that I am. I am the past present and future. I am the unchanging one. I am the first and the last. I am the all-powerful, omnipresent, omniscient. I am that I am. That is who is with you. So, 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 so wherever you are, there I already am. If, if you're in a wilderness, there I am. If, if you go and you have to face an impossible mountain, there I am. If you're facing a river of difficulty, there I am. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown, Isaiah says. When you go through the fire, you will not be burned up. When it feels like you're going at it alone in the wilderness without a rain cloud in sight, you will be abundantly provided for, says the Lord. Because I am that I am, and I will never leave you or forsake you. Wherever you go, there I am. And wherever means wherever. 
in the middle of problem, Joshua receives a promise. Wherever you go, there I am with you. But then he, he, he faces another fear. It says, after the death of Moses in verse 1, it describes where this fear comes from. The Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. See, sometimes it's not the fear of uncertainty. Sometimes it's the fear of inadequacy, not being enough. I want you to think about this for a moment. The one who brought them out of Egypt, who met with God face to face, Moses, who gave the people the handwritten words of God, the one who was leading the people into the promised land, this one is dead. This was a game changer. They wept for months mourning his loss. Who in the world will take his place? And God says, well, I'd like to nominate Brother Joshua. Joshua was only good under Moses as an assistant, but not as a leader. See, Moses threw down a stick and magic happened. Joshua threw down a stick and nothing happened. Moses... Moses brought water from a rock. Can you do that, Joshua? No, but I, I, I know you brought your hydro flask to church and there's, there's some watering stations outside. See, Moses is a tough act to follow. When the people were, were dying and they were sick and they needed healing one time, Moses, he put up a, um, a bronze serpent instructed by God, and, and God said, hey, if the people just stare at it, they're going to be healed. Can you heal us, Joshua? Well, no, but there's a CVS on El Camino Real. What do you do when you can't measure up to another man's miracles? What do you do when you feel totally inadequate to who you're comparing yourself to? Or what other people are comparing you to. I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with the trap of comparison. I struggle with a lack of confidence. Sometimes it's, it's challenging to, to feel like I'm enough. I don't know about you, but it can feel at times in our culture like whatever the bar is in my head, it's still not enough. I don't measure up. I'm not gifted like them. I'm not talented enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not smart enough or funny enough to be that charismatic personality. I, I, I don't have that amount in my bank account to live like everyone else, maybe. Not a good enough mom. I don't do this veggie puree mix for my kids' baby food. I just get it store-bought from Albertsons. Not enough. I wish I could provide so much more for my kids, man. With how things are, are looking, it just feels like I'm not going to be able to give them enough in the future. Or no matter how hard I try in this dating scene, it just feels like I'm never enough. See, the enemy loves to make you feel inferior and worthless and inadequate. And he wants to tell you that you aren't enough. And God is here telling you today that with him, you are more than enough. Amen. See, Joshua wasn't Moses. And by the way, everyone's got a Moses in their life, right? You got a sibling, you got, you got a, a friend, you've got someone on Instagram, like, who's your Moses? Who's your Moses that you're comparing yourself to? Feeling inadequate when you look at their life? You ever meet those people that are like really good looking, really smart, and then really kind? Yes. You're like, I hate you. <laughs> Give me one chink in the armor. Give me one flaw. And, and we can feel insecure and inadequate. That's, that's, insecurity is just a form of fear that we're not enough. 
On, on, on top of it, I find it interesting that it says that Joshua is son of none. And I'm going to take creative license for a moment. Right? Because maybe you feel like you're a nobody from nowhere. Maybe, maybe you feel like you don't have any influence on social media. You haven't made a mark or a, a footprint. Maybe you, you feel like you don't have the pedigree, you don't have the credibility, you don't have the network, you don't have the relationships, you, you didn't grow up in the right place, you don't have the right gifting, you don't have the right personality, you don't, and you're not enough. Maybe you already tried starting point that's happening today, by the way, and you took that spiritual gifts test and you hoped that you got the gift of miracles and you got the gift of administration. Yeah, I was like, dang it! <laughs> Joshua 1.5 says, no one's going to be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. I want to tell you this morning, Moses, jo Joshua, Billy Graham, you, guess what your title is? Child of God. Same heavenly position, different earthly assignment. When we get to heaven, Moses, David, Joshua, Billy Graham, you, me, are all going to lay our crowns at the feet of one king. And God told Joshua, I did not call you to be Moses Jr. I called you to be Joshua with your personality, with your gifting, with your heavenly DNA, with your mind, with your passion, with your place, with your influence. I called you to be you. The world doesn't need another Moses. The world needs a Joshua. And yeah, I used a staff with him, but I'm going to use a sword with you. Man, so much of us, I feel this in my heart, are wasting our time trying to be someone that God hasn't created for us to be. Don't waste your time robbing yourself of a beautiful future, trying to be what other people think you should be or say you should be or who you are comparing yourself to. It's interesting. God said, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Joshua could have thought, man, my, my staff isn't the same. This, this water thing isn't working out for me. And God said, I did not say that I would do through you what I did through Moses. I said I would be with you as I was with Moses. I will be with you. The thing that will, that will conquer all fear in your life is not your accomplishments, your accolades, it's not your gifting, it's not your talent, it's not your success. It's the reality that the God of the universe will be with you wherever you go. Apart from him, you can do nothing, but with him, all things are possible. God says the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. The time has come for you. Well, John, I didn't, I didn't see it in my family. I didn't have that model of faith. I didn't, I didn't have a dad or a mom that, that trained me in God's word and loved me and, and, and affirmed me and, and spoke faith and hope into my life. I didn't see it. John, I didn't have the opportunities that other people have. I haven't seen it in, in, in my past relationships. I don't know what health looks like. I don't, I don't know what, what having security and confidence feels like. 
and, and, and I know that you can't see it yet in your future, but God is telling you today that the time has come for you. See, logic works for your past, but only faith works for your future. Logic says, I, I, I only can trust God with what I've experienced or what I've seen or what I've witnessed. But God is saying today, today the time has come for you, just like Joshua, to cross the Jordan River. The Jordan River is what separated from what you've experienced up until now. And now you're about to step in to what I'm calling you into a brand new place, a brand new territory, a brand new future, a new dimension in your walk with God. But you have to recognize that you only live for a brief time here on planet Earth. And there is an urgency to this moment because God didn't tell Joshua, the time has come for you to follow. The time has come for you to be a wallflower. He said, no, I know you're the assistant. I know you feel like you're just son of none, but the time has come for you to be an overcomer. The time has come for you to be a leader. The time has come for you to be a leader in your home, dad. The time has come for you to be empowered. Women, I mean, I, I want you to hear it just on Mother's Day. Beth Redmond did such a great job. The time has come for you to be empowered, to step into your God-given destiny. You have what it takes. The time has come for you not to shrink back and go to defaults and patterns and fears and worries and insecurities, but to say, I have faith for the future. And I'm gonna step my foot in a new territory that God has called me into, trusting and believing that wherever I plant my foot, all authority is mine through Jesus Christ. I am more than a conqueror in him. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer. I will not allow my past to dictate what God wants to do in and through me in my future. I know for some of us it feels like, hey, I don't know if it's my time. I don't know if I'm ready to go to starting point and, and, and go all in in my faith and take that step. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's really God calling me or if it's just me wanting something on my own. I, 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 don't, I don't know, I'm timid, I'm, I'm shy, I'm, I'm, I'm introverted. It's, it's nothing I've experienced before. I just believe and I just prophetically declare right now, there are leaders in this room. You may not feel like it, you may not have seen it, you may not have stepped into what you're about to step into, but you are on the brink of the Jordan River. And God says, if you trust me to cross this river, I will do crazy things in and through your life that you have yet to experience. I don't care if you're 80 years old, if you got breath in your lungs, there's more purpose for your life. I am telling you today, Logic only works for your past, but faith works for your future. And God is telling you, I know you feel like the assistant. I know you just feel like a follower, but you are a leader and it's your time. Man, time is short. Time is crazy in our world right now. We can't be cruisy and casual in Orange County. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time to step up, student, next generation. It's your time. You create the future that God longs for. Don't wait for someone else to create it. The Spirit of the Lord is in you. And if God's Spirit is in you, nothing can stand against you. As Joshua stood and took a step across the Jordan River, filled with the confidence of God, filled with faith, filled with this kind of confidence,
confidence that put fear in its place. The walls of Jericho that looked impossible came crumbling down. Joshua was so filled with faith, he, he rushed one time up a hill and he took on what he didn't know at the time was the leader of the angels' armies. And he said, are you for us or against us, bro? Because I'm about to cut you down. Joshua followed the Lord. And in a day of cultural confusion, where you could go one way or another way, he took his family by his side and said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua was an ordinary man like me and you but he put fear in its place and said I will serve the Lord and the Lord was with him wherever he went every place he stepped his foot he was on land that was given to him he fought 31 kings and conquered them all Lord is going to give you victory. You're full of fear. And I get it. You're saying, what if this falls apart? What if I take a step? What if I take a leap and it doesn't happen? What if? What if? What if? And I want you to turn that around instead of a pessimistic, negative, lie of the enemy kind of what if. I want you to have a God-sized, faith-filled what if. What if I actually followed God today? What if I went for it in faith? What if I took that fear and I said, you will not have a hold on me any longer. And I stepped in and I said, God, I surrender. I am ordinary and I am not enough, but with you, I am more than enough. Would you stand all across this place? I want you to imagine for a moment what your life could look like from this day forward if you put fear in its place. If you put logic in your past and you truly trusted the Lord, you truly put your hope, your confidence, your faith, your gifting, your unique personality, your heavenly DNA in his hands. What could he do through you? All across this place, just with eyes closed, maybe there are people here today and you'd say, John, I want to live with that kind of faith, but I'm not in right relationship with God. I want to live with victory, but I got so much stuff in my life that keeps holding me back and keeping me distant from God. I want to give you that invitation today. There's one person, there's only one person that took on flesh. The ultimate overcomer defeated death, defeated hell, defeated the grave. He died for your sins. He died as a man. He died for you and as you, taking on your guilt and shame, forgiving you, making you free, and giving you a home in heaven and eternal life to live for today. You can live victorious and free from this day forward. And if that's you, you say, John, I'm not sure. I'm uncertain about my future. I'm uncertain that I'm in right relationship with God and I want to be saved. I want to go all in. Would you just raise your hand right now all across this place if that's you? Would you just raise your hand and say, I want to go all in. I want to be certain on my salvation. I want to be certain that I am saved, that I have a home in heaven, that I got a purpose to live for. Yeah. Step into that victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we're so grateful that we don't have to do life alone. That we don't have to be overwhelmed by our fear. We are grateful that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You said, hey, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart, 
because I have overcome the world. And so I bless every single person here with the mindset of Christ. Everything may not shift for you in a moment, but today you can walk out of this place with a brand new mindset. No longer a victim, but a victor, an overcomer. The Spirit of the Lord, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, now lives in you. And you can walk out today with freedom and confidence, knowing that He is with you wherever you go. Oh, I bless you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.